not trying to predict the future. That's not my job. I'm just doing this so that way you can be aware. All right, what's going on everyone? Jeff Kogan. In this episode, I wanna talk about uh, the Los Angeles housing market and a possible housing market killer, what the millennials might do to the housing market, and then a couple of other stuff that's just in my mind when it comes to the real estate market. I had a conversation with a good friend of mine, local developer uh, out in Los Angeles, and we got into conversation uh, uh, about uh, the housing market, right? And I didn't know about this, and so I'm relaying it to you because I typically on what I like to call low information diet, meaning that I try not to consume any news that is not relevant to myself personally or my clients uh, and when I say personally like in like myself and my family and uh, the business and friends right if it's not related to that I don't watch it I talked about this on a different uh, episode of the podcast where I talked about the challenges of uh, this real estate market and what social media might actually do to the real estate market okay and um, it was really really interesting because I didn't know about this but something called measure s um, if you live in Los Angeles um, which I knew it was on the chopping blocks because I remember last year uh, like in I want to say November okay uh, I, I just remember it because it had a bunch of J's in it right so it's like I was I was joking around like it's, the, it's that measured me, measure triple J you know so um, but basically this it's a moratorium uh, moratorium I can't even say the word name moratorium for developers uh, not being able to build these little McMansions in uh, Los Angeles Right, so what happened is that people like that bought in when I love I love Lucy was out or whatever. Okay, um, that that lived there in a long time, hold that property for a long time, got sick and tired of people actually building like ginormous apartment buildings next to their house and or ginormous little McMansions um, blocking their view. All right, meaning that hey, you know what? They look outside and there's a freaking wall. Right, the neighbor doesn't care what that buys the new house. Why is because they're towering over the old house, right? So they don't care about that, right? So, um, and I talked about this even with my investors when we had a deal right on Sixth and Orange, um, which is in the part of uh, Los Angeles. Um, which is called kind of like Hancock Park, okay? So we bought this property, got permits on it, and we ended up wholesaling the deal, and we made about maybe like 80 grand on that, right, in the course of doing it. Um, and then the investor flipped it out from our projected sales price about, I think, 1.9, um, what was it? What? 1.9 no, our projected was 1.6 at that time, and he flipped it out for 1.9. That's the number, I believe, yeah. So we were off on our projections which was okay because the market took off what it, and the market did what it did. But that measure, right, not the measure triple J or measure JJJ, measure S is the conversation that I had, uh, uh, we talked about because he was basically saying, yeah, it didn't pass. And I was just like, oh, I totally forgot about it, right? I knew it was on the ballots, but I forgot about it because, you know, like I'm not building brand new construction homes anymore. So I'm just like, you know, I pay attention to enough of it, but I don't really like, you know, into it like he actually like donated money to the campaign um, and to making sure that it doesn't pass right so so what was interesting is we got into a conversation about baby boomers um, buying these homes living in it for a long time and really getting pissed off at these developers building the little McMansions or building these apartments um, and anything that anyone that has built houses before know about this right certain zoning like R3 or whatever you actually have a zoning um, they kind of have like an overlay exemption to this right meaning that you can build I think the, the rule book says like 800 square feet or something like that per unit that you can make but you can actually make 700 and I think 50 uh, 50 feet square square feet uh, uh, units okay as long as you have like enough parking space so you have to go like subterranean and parking when you build it and stuff okay but we got in a conversation about this and um, I pointed out in the fact of I was like well it's not that surprising and he was just like, why? And I was just like, well, think about it, man. I was just like, I was just like, hey, man, look at look at Los Angeles. I was just like, look at the amount of homeowners we actually have in Los Angeles. And I and and I talked about this on a different report where where we have hit less than 50 percent homeowners in Los Angeles, meaning that there's more people who are physically renting. 
Okay, well, nothing is wrong with renting, right? You're not like a like a pheasant or, you know, you're not like a, hey, you know, a, a lower income, poverty stricken, you know, person. If you rent, then there's nothing wrong with that, okay? Um, but the percentage is significantly lower. So if the percentage is significantly lower, is it any surprise to be able to convince the people who do not own houses to actually vote against the, you know, Measure S? It's not. Right? It's not because they're in their eyes. They're like, Shit, man, I need more housing. Rent's expensive already. You know, for a you know little shack of 800 square feet, I gotta pay two grand in, in Los Angeles. Be like, hey, we need, we need to make some more. Right? So it's not that difficult to actually convince that population or the millennials to vote vote for that. So this kind of ties into what I think might happen with the real estate market. Right? And again, I'm not trying to predict the future. That's not my job. I'm just doing this so that way you can be aware um, because one I'm playing it both ways regardless the market skyrockets or what goes down I'm gonna make money regardless of which way it goes now that I do want it to crash I'll tell you that much okay I do want it to crash why is because I know how to make money when there's actual fear okay not a little hiccup but if it's a fear in the marketplace I know that'll clean house all right but the more I'm looking at this I think that it's not going to happen on what we think that it's going to do. Will there be a correction? I think so, okay? But will it be a crash? I don't think so. And the reason is, it seems like more and more millennials are on the sideline. Like, like yeah, there's a, there's a group of millennials, okay, that are absolutely broke and do not have money, right? They're theirs, okay? But there's also a group of millennials, like a lot of my friends, right, that have, that make great money okay we're very savvy right in business and we stock a lot of money away and things like that right but yet we're still renting right like in my case you know my wife owned a house uh, bought a house at the right time so it was like you know so that's why you know we're considered I guess homeowners right so um, but there's a lot of people like my friends who who live in like four thousand five thousand dollars per month rent but they're like expensing that off um, doing YouTube videos and stuff like that right because they were um, business owners so they do the little vlogs in the apartments and really they're hard cost on it because they're paying using pre-tax dollars um hard cost on it to rent it out on a gorgeous luxury apartment is only like two grand or whatever at the end of the day right so it's smart on their part and that these people may buy may buy okay if they see a little bit decline in the real estate market okay and there's so many more other people that are on the fence okay so again i'm not saying this to predict what the real estate market will do but i want you to consider this okay is that one the biggest thing that's currently that's going to affect the mar uh, real estate markets in California, and obviously this is a California thing, okay, is a uh, Prop 13. All right, Prop 13 is for people who don't know. It's a, it's literally a a property tax cap that people have, meaning that if you bought a home and you owned it for a long time, there's essentially a ceiling on what property taxes can go up to. Versus if you are in a place like Texas or something like that, or different parts of the world, right? Like I think Texas uh, property tax varies significantly by county by county. Okay, but in certain parts, right, is property value goes up. Guess what? Um, property taxes go up with it versus in California because we have prop 13 it's caps off the ceiling to I think like uh, um, an inflation adjusted from your baseline purchase or something like that so what that really means is that it only goes up like 1% right which is very small right so like someone like my mom and my stepdad who owns a house right they've owned it since 70s their property taxes I think like a couple hundred bucks right so that alone does not incentivize individuals to sell their property tax I mean like sell the property all right. So again, Prop 13 forces people not wanting to sell. All right. It just doesn't. It, it, it won't. Why would you want to sell? Because property tax is so low. Versus if they take that off, then guess what? Um, then boom, instantly, they're going to be forced to sell. It wouldn't be too difficult if you wanted to increase revenue for uh, the state of California, even though property taxes is is not the biggest, okay, um, but it is a good chunk. If you wanted to, you can go ahead and go away with Prop 13. And you can convince a whole generation of millennials to, because if they're not homeowners, they'll be like, yeah, sure, no problem, right? And a lot of the older generation, people who bought, like I said, in the I Love Lucy days and held on to properties, right? They will be impacted because I'm sure they'll grandfather it in, but, but you know, of course, it will adjust and they would have to pay a lot more, 
right? They'll just get outvoted. And that's where it's gonna be really interesting for me to see and how social media is gonna affect that because, again, it's not like 2004, 2005 where when people were drawing lines in the sand and talking about subprime market loans, hey, these option arm loans are bad, you know, hey, we're gonna see a ginormous crash, right? The, the internet didn't take, you know, it was hard. It was even hard to find a counter perspective on that versus now if you want to look at the bull side on the market on what the real estate market is going to explode you can find that right if you want to find a counter counter perspective on that you can find that too and then the crazy thing about it like place like social media and the algorithms of people knowing like what you like and what you click on right it's easy to stuff and put that information right in front of you so if you're a die hard die hard you know bear and think that it's going to crash keep that putting that in front of you okay um, what if you're you know die hard bull and thinking that the market is going to go to stratosphere keep on putting that in front of you or if you want to be really 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 crazy right um to manipulate the market and social engineer uh a, a collapse or social engineer another rise right it's just keep on putting feel good news hey it keeps on rising keeps on rising right you can definitely do that now my opinion of what the feds will do even though yes they just had a rating hike increase increased okay is that the federal government knows that hey they cannot default you can't. Why? It's because they have something called a magical printing press, the Federal Reserve, and they can continuously print money. So that means that they will not default. Not anytime soon, I believe, okay? If you believe that, then I think that you're you're betting against the government, which uh, betting against the United States government is going to be a bad mistake, right? Uh, I know that because I made that mistake in 2008, 2009, trading, uh, uh, trading in the commodities market, and literally in a week, um, when the stock market tanked simultaneously, uh, uh, literally, boom, I think I lost like 20 grand or something like that, betting against it, versus, right, versus being in cash position, and then actually went back in, um, and then I would have probably cleaned house, okay? So, so the point of me saying that is, again, pay attention, try to understand both sides, and try to figure out how to make money on either way, because like, for example, right, if prop 13 goes away, it doesn't really impact if you own uh, if you own uh, uh, apartment complex in California because really it doesn't, right? Um, <laughs> it's more for residential. Uh, it's more for residential side that's going to be impacted, in my opinion, on uh, on that side more, right? So one, I firmly want it to crash. Okay, I think that's really selfish because I think a lot of people are going to be impacted. Um, but even if it does this little bit, right? If it goes a little bit, I think I personally think and feel that. Um, all the salespeople in the real estate market be like, this is it, this is the crash, you gotta hop in now. And, uh, and a bunch of people will come back in and prop up the market even more, right? And then when that happens, people felt like, oh my gosh, I already missed it, right? Then they're gonna come in and it's gonna boom, it may, it may skyrocket as a stratosphere. And anyone who believes that it can go either way, I'm a firm believer that, hey, hey, you know what? Uh, um, you know, it's fun to predict, right? A lot of people will try to predict something, right? Because it's like, and it's an opinion, right? And just like an opinion, uh, everyone has it. It's like a, it's like an a-hole. Everyone has it, right? That's what I say. And why am I saying this? Is like, am I predicting that? Yeah, in a sense, yeah. I guess I'm one a-hole too. But also, I want to document some of the my, my thought process because, again, people ask me all the time, what do you think the real estate market will do? And really. I would like to be like, go watch this video, right? Or go watch a handful of videos or listen to this podcast of, of, what, I, of what I believe that the real estate market will do because really, no one really knows, okay? I'll tell you, hey, fundamentally, it, depending on what, you know, and then also think about this, right? Like if you're looking to invest in real estate as an asset class, it is a, it is a illiquid asset, meaning you can't just liquidate it overnight. You just can't because it's tangible. You got to sell it, right? Versus like the stock market, that's a liquid asset, a liquid paper. Um, so meaning if it starts coming down, put your stop losses, boom, you can liquidate. You can get out of your position. Versus real estate, if you own a house, you got to sell the darn thing. Ask me how I know that when the market starts turning, right? So so it'll be really interesting to see how that's, again, is going to impact. And, and the smart people, as I said, are buying apartments, buying right, and buying in the right areas um, for cash flow purposes. Because if it cash flows now, you're good. All right? And I'll end with this. Um, a conversation I had with a local builder here in Los Angeles, uh, um, I want to say in the beginning of the year, and we joke around about this. We always joked around about this. And it says, hey, and he's built, I think he's working on like 15, I think that's what he said, 15, I could be wrong, 15 ground-up construction. 
uh, ground up construction um, uh, in Los Angeles and he's making these uh, dinky one uh, uh, one wet bedroom like again I told you that the exemption that 750 square feet uh, uh, one bedroom apartments right so he's packing them in like sardines right and he's gonna build them out and uh, um, I still and I laughed after he said this but his thing where he says look He's all like, I don't know what the market will do, but hey, you know what? Come talk to me in 24 months. I'm either going to be a multimillionaire or, uh, or, or, or I'm going to be a tremendous amount of debt. And I'm going to be, and you and I, we can have a conversation at that time, you know? Why did I laugh about that? Is because it's so true. We can't control market forces. We can't, absolutely, okay? People who think that they can control and predict it are usually the ones that are on the fence, on the sideline, and be like, oh my gosh, I missed out, all right? Versus the people that are in the game, on the court, okay? People that are playing on the court, right? Like, in a, I'm gonna give you a basketball analogy. If you're playing on the court, we don't really care about what people are saying in the crowd, all right? We really don't care. We're focused on what's happening play by play at the moment, all right? And a true investor, true entrepreneur that's doing that will do exactly that. So that's what I got for you. Hope you enjoyed it. I got to go in and uh, got tons of other stuff to do. So uh, I will see you guys in another episode of Jeff Koga Live.